But we're talking here about the Vaibhava. So here he's discussing this idea of Paramad Bhuta Vaibhavaya. So Radharani, right, we have this with this Brahmeshwaradi Suduruha Padaravinda Srimat Paraga Paramad Bhuta Vaibhavaya. One word, 11 parts. <laughs> So the, he's, now he wants to take these three words, parama, adbhut, and vaibhava. So vaibhava, you know this, this word vaibhava is very important, because it's vaibhava, it means the same as aishwarya, really. Right? So parama, adbhut, adbhut is wonderful, or, a, astonishing, and that's, we've already discussed that, that adbhut is the um, essence of rasa. Okay? It's not that adbhut is always present in rasa. Why? Because uh, if it's not adbhut, if it doesn't, if it doesn't fill you with a sense of wonder, then it's not rasa. If it doesn't, so that's why we always say nava nava. It's always new, always always fresh. Why do we say it's always fresh and always new? Because the transcendental rasa is always present. So it's always adbhut. It's always new. It's always fresh. It's always re revealing new things. <laughs> Never see. Even Krishna, we were just doing Govinda Lilamrita this morning. So uh, Radharani is awake. The description is being in Govinda Lilamrita that Radha and Krishna are just waking up. All the birds have come and are making are singing their songs. And then the Shuka and the Sari. There are two Shukas and two Saris. And they come and they, they start to uh, they start to say nice uh, verses that are meant to get Radha and Krishna to wake up. You know, telling them how, you know, making nice descriptions of the morning, but warning them, you know, the sun is coming up, you know, the eastern sky is turning red. Maybe why is the eastern sky turning red, you know, from love? The, her, the sun, her husband is coming, and so she's all happy, and so she's turning uh, red with joy for the coming of the sun. And so on and so on, so making these nice, nice poems, but uh, always the purpose is, so get up! You know, it's getting late. Anyway, then Krishna is holding Radha, and Radha is in his lap, and so he's, he looks at her face you know, for the first time in the morning and sees you know, her eyes are still you know, rolling with fatigue, and her hair is you know, all over the place, and her necklace is broken, and her garland is wearing a broken garland. And, and uh, you know, she's... She looks at him, but then she you know, gets shy and she turns her eyes away with a little smile on her face. Now, Krishna, you know, he's Krishna for him. That's, you know, it's always new. But Krishna is experiencing the ever newness of Radharani's beauty, and Radharani is also experiencing the ever newness of Krishna's beauty. And so for them, the, it never stops. That's why in the Chaitanya Charitamrita says there's a competition going on constantly between Radha and Krishna's prem. Radha's prem is always a little bit ahead. Krishna's always playing a little bit of catch-up. But still, they're in competition. Krishna's beauty, Radharani's perception of Krishna uh, uh, becomes more profound because of her love. And so Krishna's beauty increases. She makes her, her perception makes Krishna's beauty increase. And then Krishna's beauty increases and her love increases. And then his beauty increases again, like that, and vice versa. So there's no, that's rasa. The rasa means, this transcendental rasa means it's always increasing. And to some extent we can experience that. Don't worry, we can experience that. Part of it is you have to remind yourself sometimes. Sometimes you have to remind yourself. But as soon as you remind yourself and you can concentrate and you fix your mind and you remember, then you'll get that taste as well. So the Vaibhava, what's interesting here is that the real Aishwarya of Radha and Krishna is their Madhurya. That's their real Aishwarya. That's their real glory. The real glory of Krishna that he's, you know, even if you look at it from the Achintya Veda Veda perspective, right? The Achintya Veda Veda perspective is that creation itself is a function of an Anksha. It's not a function of, this, of, of, Krishna, of the Supreme Person Himself. Creation is, a, is an aspect of the, the material creation, that is to say. The, first of all, the creation is nitya. The creation of the, the spiritual world is eternal. It's not created. 
It's not a question that the spiritual world was or was not. It's eternal and eternally existent. So any speech, any talking about creation is really for our understanding. When he says, Eko Ham Bahusyam, which is the, the text in the Shastras, Eko Ham Bahusyam says, that I, am, I am one, I am alone, and let me become many. Right? That's the famous statement in the Taittiriya Upanishad. Or, Eka Kina Ramate, uh, Sadvitiyam Aichat. He says that he was alone and he was not happy, and therefore he desired a second. These, these kinds of statements are there in the, in the scripture. But those are just for, those are just for us in our in our minds the way we are because we think like that we're in these bodies with our path with the a, a perception of past present and future we have we have to think that one time that God created the world and then it's you know it has creation maintenance and destruction like that and that's within the framework of time in the eternal world that doesn't that doesn't uh, that's not relevant so I was somebody was asking me today he was saying well, what about the Siddha Deha your Siddha Deha there are argu so many arguments about the Siddha Deha. Someone is saying, does the Siddha Deha already exist in the, in the spiritual world? Or do you create the, the Siddha Deha by your own meditation? Uh, you know, uh, so the, the question is, is uh, it seems uh, complicated, but if you think that in the eternal world there's no past, present or future, or there's no, no past or future, it is, the Siddha Deha is already there. But, the point is that as a sadhaka, because we're sadhakas, we have that time, which actually, time actually has a, a, a rasika function. The time, the time itself has a, creates, a, makes rasa possible. Because uh, you can't have a story without time, and you can't have rasa without a story. When you get into the nitya lila, then it's a different thing. But sadhaka is a lila also. Being a sadhaka is also a lila. It's also Krishna's lila. Is, Krishna has a lila with you, he has a lila with you, he has a lila with every single one of us. And the lila is, I'm going back to home, back to Godhead. That's the story. You know? I'm, this is my story. My story is I'm going back to home, back to Godhead. Every one of us is writing a little book. And I'm writing the book, How Jagadananda Went Back to Home, Back to Godhead. How Jagadananda Became Radha's Dasi. You see? But once you're Radha's Dasi, then, you know, that's, it always was, always will be, and always is. So the only, the, the only, the, so, the, uh, so the existence of the world is there uh, for the purpose of rasa. It's the purpose of the rasa, but it's the rasa of the sadhaka deha. It's the rasa, and it's a very nice rasa. Nice rasa, all obstacles come get in the way, you know. No obstacles get in the way, people get in the way, family members get in the way, sometimes your guru gets in the way. Ah, an adventure, you know, your guru gets in the way of your rasa. You, know, you, have to, you have to also, you know, even the guru sometimes you have to escape from in order to get closer to Radha. Seriously. You know? If the guru is also just uh, functioning as a, as a dharma, you know, if the guru is just functioning as a dharma, like with some vitis or some rules, right? Preventing the flow of bhakti and the flow of prem. He may, he may, it's like, just like the gopis. The gopis had, you know, they, they had their, they had the family members, they had their, they had people telling them also. Just like look at in the story of, in the, in the Bhagavatam, there are a couple of stories, but the most famous one is the one of uh, Bali and Shukra. Right? Shukracharya is Bali's guru. And he's telling he's telling Bali, don't give don't give charity to this kid. You're going to be regret it because Bali Rihaspati could I mean excuse me uh, Shukracharya could recognize who this Bhamana was. So he says, don't if you if you give anything to this kid, you're going to lose everything. <clears throat> so he was telling the truth, but Bali rejected him because he he he, he somehow or another he had the vision to see that it was more, that he would gain more, that there was a greater gain by, by sacrificing everything to Vamana than there was by listening to his own guru. So sometimes the insight of the disciple is greater than but that of the guru. Sukracharya is not Vidaspati. 
Oh, he's saying Shukrachari. I said Shukrachari. No, I made a mistake and I corrected um, myself. No, no, Shukrachari is the guru of the demons. So he's the guru of Bali. But he's also in... The demons, right? Yeah. Yeah. But still, but like, he, is, he was devoted. That was the only good thing. But he was. So, but, but, uh, he's teaching to Bali not to un believe in that. Yeah. So, um, uh, Bali was devoted, so he believed. But still, from the external point of view. For general guru, you cannot say like that, that you refuse that. From the external point of view. Yeah. He is still functioning as in the role of guru, and the other one is functioning in the role of disciple. So still, you have the idea that one is the one is the uh, the disciple. By the rule is, disciple should listen to the guru, whether it's a demon guru or or a, or a, 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 a devotee guru, it doesn't matter. The rule is the same that you follow the guru. <laughs> but it says that guru rapyavaliptasya karya karya janata. Utpanna pratipanna sya tyaga eva vidyate. Naiva. This is true. So, it, three kinds of three things that they say about rejecting the Guru. I mean, this is something that's practical, it's a fact. I mean, I bet there's people here who've already had two or three Gurus or more. You know? And people who I know people who have gone through, you know, many Gurus. Now, actually, the fact is, the fact is that Guru Tattva and the, and the form of Guru are, are, are two different things. So sometimes the Guru Tattva uh, manifests itself and then it unmanifests itself. Right? Doesn't mean that, let's say, for instance, if you're my Guru, right? I come to you and you and you and you and, and, and you're, you you know you teach me something very important. And so I learn something very important from you. Guru Tattva is manifest inside you, and so I learn something from you. So I respect, I honor you, because why? It's just like if if Krishna appeared in Mathura. Yeah. and the birthplace in Mathura, I honor that place because that's where Krishna appeared. So in the same way, Guru Tattva is the manifestation of Krishna, it appears in you. I see some truth. The light of truth comes through you. But then that light doesn't necessarily stay in you all the time. So when that light, if that light goes away, if it stops to co coming through you, now wh what would I say? How can I say that? Shouldn't I always follow the Guru, whether he's, you know, they, they're, they're, they're saying that Guru uh, Adesha, uh, Guru Agya Avicharaniya. This is in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mahaprabhu says, Guru Agya Avicharaniya. That you're not supposed to, uh, to, to <coughs> debate with the Guru and you accept his command without any argument. Right? So, uh, what do I do? You know, the, the fact of the matter is that the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the first chapter, what does it say? says that there are guru, there's diksha guru and shiksha guru, yeah? And it says shiksha guru is two kinds. Shiksha guru is the mahanta, the great devotee, and the other shiksha guru is antaryami. Chaita guru. Yeah? The chaita guru, chitya guru, chaita guru. So chaita guru means what? Chaita guru means from within. Now, I, we were just talking about experience, right? So experience is going to, the experience and chaita guru are inside you. So you're, 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 it's like the Chaitya Guru is saying yes and no. The Chaitya Guru is guiding you from within. And if the Guru tells you to do something that is improper, all right, example. The Guru might, you, all right, let's say you have Sadguru who is perfect devotee. And he tells you to do something and you don't do it because you don't think it's the right thing. Then what happens? If it's true, if what he said was true, you will, you, you know, you, you may, sooner or later, you will get the lesson. Sooner or later, your disobedience or your rejection of his teaching will result in the fact that you will find that you are, you know, that you will see the light. Because by the grace of the Guru, you will see that he was telling the truth. Right? And sometimes that might come quite late. Sometimes that might not even happen in this lifetime. It might happen in your next lifetime. But the only thing you really, the only real... So we pray, we pray to the Chaitya Guru, we pray to the Guru within to give us guidance so that we will either understand the teaching of the Guru or that we will, uh, you know, find the right answer. 
Because the fact of the matter is that Guru is also uh, doing a human lila. Well, just like why you, the Guru is doing a human lila. So when we say that the, not to look, for instance, in the in Gupta Desh Amrita, it says there that just like the Ganges has, uh, you know, the, the mud and bubbles and things come up in the Ganges water, and so because the mud and bubbles are coming up in the Ganges water, uh, you still consider the, the Ganges to be holy and pure. So in the same way the Guru, you know, we consider him to be holy and pure, even though he might have some physical defect, right? but also he may have some mental defect also. He may have other kinds of defects besides physical defects. He might appear to be have a material attitude. But, Guru Apyavaliptasya Karya Karya Majanataha Utpanna Pratipadnasya Tyaga Eva Vidhiyate That's still there. And Jiva Goswami quotes this in Bhakti Sandharva. So he's not, uh, he, does, he still takes it seriously. He says that the main thing is that if the Guru is a Bhakti Vidveshi, if the Guru uh, is a, inimical to, to devotees, then he should be renounced. And if the Guru refuses to allow you to associate with advanced devotees. Yeah. Because the thing is, he says that, Jiva Goswami says, look, if the Guru refuses to allow you, what is associating with advanced devotees, that's one of the 64 Angas. That's one of the five principal Angas, right? One of the five principal Angas of Bhakti is to associate with advanced devotees. So you don't associate with advanced devotees. Then, uh, if, he, if the Guru doesn't let you associate with advanced devotees, then how will you, uh, how will you progress? How will you engage in bhakti? You're not, you're, you're, he's forbidding you to engage in bhakti. So if he's forbidding you to engage in bhakti, then how are you going to progress? So he's giving you a conflicting thing. The Shastra is saying to associate with devotees, and he's saying don't associate with anybody except me, or to anybody except my, my disciples, or stay in, you know? Devotion is about really about freedom. It's not, you know, you don't want to think that you're in a prison if you're a devotee. What's the point of going into a prison? You're already in prison in Maya. So if you go into, if you go into the bhakti path and you feel as though you're in a prison, what was the, what, what, what did you, what was the point? So it has to be the natural flow, of, and bhakti, and Raganuga bhakti especially, is about a natural flow, a natural flow of attraction. The real reason that you come to the Guru is because he's giving you, the, he's giving you a taste and giving you a, 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 some hope and some means, the means and the, uh, by which you can attain spontaneous love for Krishna. And if that spontaneous love starts to be stifled, then you should allow the river, the river of your desire for pure devotion to flow and not to be dammed up. And then what is the flow? The flow is the flow is the flow is the one of attraction. The flow is the one of attraction. So it is not really, but the point really what I'm going to say is it doesn't really necessarily mean that you're really, there's no such thing really as Guru Tyaga. There's really, Guru Tyaga is actually a misnomer. Because you can't really tag a Guru. If you have a, if you, because why? Because Guru represents the truth. So if you, if, if, if anybody who gave you the truth is a guru, even a person who said, you know, any, who taught you anything, your mother is a guru because she taught you things, your father is a guru, your br older brother is a guru, your older sister is a guru, your teachers in school, they're all gurus. Anyone who gave you any kind of truth is a guru. So whatever, and, the, and of course the guru who, who gave you uh, insight into bhakti and into the path of devotion, path of prema bhakti, that, that, is a genuine guru. But the genuine guru will not stop you from pursuing prema bhakti. And if you have to, and if he does, out of you know, some material consideration, because you know, uh, uh, there are many gurus who are not you know, on the highest level of achievement. And so you come, into, you come into contact with a guru who's not on the highest level of achievement. He teaches you, let's say, some important basic things, like your grade one school teacher, and then you go on. It doesn't mean if you met if you met your grade one school teacher today, or if you met your grade two school teacher today, would you not show them respect and feel affection for them? Unless they were of course whacking, beating you every day. <laughs> you know, like they sometimes do. 
You know, but normally, normally, if you meet your, your the teacher who, who was your grade school teacher or your you know like that, then you then you would treat treat them with affection and love because they because even now you might know way more than them. You may be more intelligent. You may be more rich. You may have more than anything that they have. But still, because they gave because something came to you through them because they. Because something important came to you through them. Many people say that their school teachers were the most important person in their life because of the influence that they had, the, the direction they gave them in life, and so on. Yeah, just let me finish. Yeah. So the fact is that you see that you see that whoever gave you, you know, in the in the in the uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas, there's a verse also that says that even if a person teaches you one half of one shloka. Uh, that person, his guru, is a f manifestation of Vishnu himself. So what to speak of the person who act, opens up the entire uh, uh, vast field, uh, you know, the, who, who shows you the way, uh, uh, fully gives you the entire path and tells you clearly how you can attain the Supreme Lord. Right? So therefore you have to have that attitude. The attitude is not that you're, there's Guru Tyaga going on. Don't think like that. Never think like that. Because whoever gives you, give you, has given you grace, that means that they're, that, uh, they're your guru. And so you glorify and you honor the guru tattva, the guru tva, the guru nature, the guru being that's in that person. And you never stop. You never stop. But you have to follow the, the natural stream of your attraction. You have to follow the natural stream of your desire as it's revealed to you. If it's revealed to you, let's say for instance, if your guru is in the platform of Vaidhi Bhakti, okay, and you become attracted to Raganuga Bhakti, and then your guru, your Vaidhi Guru Bhakti, your Vaidhi Bhakti Guru, he will say to you, you're not ready for Raganuga Bhakti. Right? He'll try to, he, he may try many ways to stop you. He may, he'll say, follow the guru's, the guru's order is not to be uh, debated. He'll tell you this, right? He'll say, you're my disciple, you listen to me, I'm telling you to go distribute books. Yeah? You're my disciple, I'm telling you, you go and open a temple in South Africa. You know? So, <clears throat> whatever, whatever the order is that he's giving, right? Sometimes he might be more generous, you know, like that. But still, the, if, he, if, he, if he restricts your progress in some way, and that's good, guru Karya Karya Majanata. He doesn't really know what is what is to be done and not to be done. A guru should, you know, the, the so you 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 uh, so that the point is the point is that you both recognize the existence, the permanent, eternal existence of the guru in anybody who is functioning as a guru, anybody who through through whom light has come, through whom direction has come. That person is a guru and is always to be honored eternally. Never stop. Even if that person becomes a, a demon, even if that person turns into a, the worst Vaishnava Paradi, of course you're not going to stick around if he becomes the Vaishnava Paradi. But still, you you know you remember you remember. I, there, there are many people like this I remember, uh, who you know they left the path of devotional service, but uh, somehow or another I remember the I remember that the way they were. And so the, you remember the way they were, that's, and you remember that actually for a moment Krishna appeared there. And of course, you know, uh, people come to the path of devotion and they leave again. Uh, you know, this is the, the cycle that's going on. People are living their own stories, so you can't really it, it necessarily interfere with that. We feel sad, maybe we can do something, and maybe we can't. But the point is that you see the presence of God. You see the grace of God manifesting in your life through that agent. The Guru is the agent of God's grace, that's what it means. And if God's grace is that you can't deny God's grace because the person has changed. You can't deny it. If I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, gloriously enjoying the rasa of Radha Bhakti and pushing forward to the uh, beautiful kingdom of Vrindavan Dham, hearing the birds chanting the glories of Radha and Krishna. I mean, this, I, I, now my, my guru has become a Buddhist or something. <laughs> you know? Not too bad. 
but you the, but the the grace came through him so therefore that grace that came through it that's eternal that grace is eternal but you must follow the stream of your own attraction you must be true to the voice of your own experience and to the voice of uh, divine guidance that comes within because finally the oh, the thing is that the final arbiter is going to be the voice of God within you anyway. If I come here, if I stay, if I, you're now, right now you're listening to me, but if I start, you know, uh, saying things that, uh, that disturb your mind and don't make a sense to you, then, you know, you, you won't listen to me anymore. Your inner voice or your inner, your inner guidance, your higher intelligence will, will refuse to accept what I'm saying. So the arbiter, the final arbiter, is the voice of God within you. He's the one who's accepting or rejecting, helping you to understand or to not understand uh, what, is, what has to be done and what is not to be done. I don't know how I ended up talking about that. This is because my friend was asking me about questions about uh, Siddhati. These are questions that come up, though they should be un they should be understood. This guru tattva thing is a very difficult one, because uh, you know, you know, in some places the guru fall guru's falling down and stuff like this is a big <laughs> a big problem. Mm. Yeah.